After the abolition of slavery, the government paid 20 million pounds to slave owners, but a new kind of slavery happened, which was a new rule that all enslaved Africans have to work as apprentices for six years, and only then they would become truly free. Apprentices had to work 40 hours a week for six years for their former masters for no pay, with the same conditions as a slave. This is still an effectively form of slavery under a different name, but only children under six have been given true freedom. If an apprentice runs away, he could be severely punished, or correct person, with the punishment the master wanted. On March 27, 1834, some four months before slaves in colonies were emancipated and their apprenticeships as waged workers began. For example, Stanley, the Secretary of State for the Colonial Department, wrote with some trepidation about this great national experiment, success of which the country looks forward to with much in anxiety. A few months later, on Christmas Day, William Clark, who was managing his family, sh his family sugar plantation in Jamaica, expressed the view of that. God grant me help. I will see out thoughtful experiments and keep things as long as I can. He had just given evidence to Jamaican House of Assembly, which was investigating how emancipation was working. The point is, emancipation was an experiment and contemporary did not know how it was going to turn out. The apprenticeships were seen as an imperfect solution for both slaves and planters. Apprenticeships represented an attempt to sustain colonial plantation economy by getting freedom accustomed to work for wages, to accept the practice of norm as normal, and to become willing waged workers. Slaves sought complete freedom, while planters resented their loss of arbitrary power and feared the disintegration of the social and economic system which had provided them the highest rank and authority. Ultimately, the experiment failed and apprenticeship was abandoned early. In the larger colonies, former slaves retreated into the bush and became peasant farmers. For them, plantation work became an occasional and supplementary source of income. Planters had to import injured workers to fill the void. As profits declined, the major British investors chose to place their money elsewhere and divested themselves of their plantations. The Caribbean sugar trade collapsed and did not recover until the 20th century. However, that was all for the future. In 1833, the British government was determined to make emancipation work and employed the panoply, panoply of social tools at its disposal to create a controlled environment through apprenticeships, and that was carefully designed to turn slaves into a willing wage workforce. Undoubtedly, the main national rationale behind the apprenticeship was economic, to maintain the production in the short term by coercion, to maintain tight control over labor costs, and to create a class of willing wage labor laborers through the education and indoctrination in the longer term, even transferring the right to issue punishments from overseers to magistrates was arguably as much about making the population willing to work through regularizing relationships within the workplace as protecting them from indiscriminate after many experimental failures and some success, a man called Joseph Sturge sailed to the West Indies 
and finds that apprenticeships have not improved the free Africans. He published he publishes his findings in 1837. In 1838, petitions are sent to Parliament protesting about the apprenticeship system. They are signed by 400,049 people. His work, Speed Up Adult Emancipation, was supported by Quaker abolitionists, including William Allen, Lord Brougham and others in speech to the House of Lords, Brougham acknowledged Sturge's central role at the time in rousing British anti-slavery opinion. Sturge published the West Indies in 1837. Both books highlighted the cruelty and injustice of the system of indentured apprenticeship. As a result of Sturge's single-minded campaign, in which he published details of the brutality of apprenticeships to shame the British government. A major row broke out among abolitionists. The more radical elements was pitted against the government. Although both had the same ends in sight, Sturgeon the Baptist, with mainly nonconformist support, led a successful popular movement for immediate and full emancipation. As a consequence, the British government, government moved the date to f for full emancipation forward to 1 August, 1 of August of 1838. They abolished the 12-year emergency apprenticeship scheme. For many English nonconformists, the African Caribbean people in August 1838 became recognized as the true date of abolition of slavery in the British Empire. In 1837, Sturge founded the Central Negro Emancipation <coughs> Committee, but more significantly, in 1839, one year after the abolition in the British Dominions, a time when many members of the anti-slavery society considered their work to be completed. Sturge led a small group that found a new anti-slavery society. They named it the British and Foreign Anti-Slavery <coughs> Society, based on the ambitious objective of achieving emancipation and an end to slavery worldwide. This society continues today as Anti-Slavery International. It works it far from achieved since slavery exists on the large scale in many countries. Albeit no, no legally, Parliament finally ends up in the apprenticeship system of 1 of August, 1838. And that is a story about apprenticeships.